This week on the sports desk, could you find a more obvious rivalry in town? It just makes sense geographically, they have to go head to head. North and South getting into the swing of things on the volleyball court and gearing up for another race at the Pioneer League crown. Last year the Saxons announced themselves as fresh new contenders in South Bay Volleyball. All signs early on pointing to this being another year they give the Spartans a run for their money. And at South High, it's another season of high expectations with the roster chock full of upperclassmen leadership. Is this the year the Spartans get past that semifinal hurdle? Plus, don't worry, we still have all your Torrance football scores and highlights to throw into the mix too. Somebody in town is lighting up the scoreboard just the way we always like it. Are the Warriors back for good? That's all coming up right here, right now on the Sports Desk. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another week right here on the Sports Desk. Nice to see you. I'm Juan Hernandez. So we've had some time to settle into the new school year now, and with every fall that comes, football is typically the first thing the average sports fan thinks about. By now, we've had a little bit of time to see who's who in the South Bay scene on Fridays and Saturdays, and sometimes we even know what to expect from our Torrance squads. So you can almost say now football's old news. At least it is compared to the rivalry that's about to heat up our fall semester when we're not checking out the action from the gridiron. I'm talking, of course, about the girls of North and South High Volleyball. In every sport, they're the perfect geographic rivalry. The Civil War, the North versus the South. Torrance Prep Sports, the Saxons versus the Spartans. Last season, the ladies at South, at South started things off in familiar territory. They were the top-ranked team in the CIF's Southern Section Division II bracket, and after another solid showing in their 2012 campaign, found themselves in a familiar postseason position that they just can't seem to jump over in years past. Our newest addition to the sports desk, Haley Outen, will let you know what I'm talking about. Coming off five straight league championships and two straight CIF semifinal appearances, the South High girls volleyball team is back in action and ready for the beginning of another successful season. A lot of us are returners, so we know what's going on, we know what's coming up, and we're just really excited it's being the last year, and we're really excited to just leave it all out on the court. There's so many of us who've played together before, we're just excited to make this last one the best. With a strong group of returners and so much excitement in the program, there seems to be a common theme when it comes to what drives this Spartan volleyball team. Energy, by far. Like all of our seniors, like I said, we're so excited for the fun season ahead. And it, like I was saying, all it is is fun for us. They're, they're just uh, an interesting group. That There's times where they're just so energetic that we have to try to calm them down. And there's other times where they'll be down and then all of a sudden one little dumb random thing will spark them and they'll be up and dancing again. When we get high energy, you can you can feel it on the court, off the court, you can feel it on the stands. You can it's just so contagious. And the Spartans have been putting most of their energy into one particular aspect of the game. Defense. We've been working a ton on defense and if we do good on defense, then that will improve our whole game. Uh the defense is getting better. Uh, we, we've, it's been a real point of emphasis since our last tournament um, that, that it needs to get better. Recently we're working on defense. I think something that we need to be working on the most is our consistency just overall. With an improving defense and a higher speed offense than last year, the Spartans have set high goals and expectations for the season ahead. Winning league is definitely one of our major goals. And of course winning CIF because we've been stuck in the semis for the past two years, so getting past semis would be nice. League, definitely. We want to win league and we want to make it as far as we can in CIF. And that's all we can do. Work step by step to get there. We want to win the semifinal game and see if we can get to a finals. In order to get to that CIF final, Coach Cooch is looking to his seniors to lead the way. We sat the seniors down right after the season last year and told them, you know, this is going to be your team. You're going to kind of rule it as a group. We saw a lot of encouragement. We don't, we're not the team that to yell at each other, so when People are down. We try to pick each other up by either like, giving tips or like hints of what they need to do to better the ball. In the end, we kind of all, like all the younger girls, all end up following all of us. So it is cool having a multiple leadership team. The Spartans did have to share the league title with the North High Saxons last season, but Coach Cooch emphasized that the goal this year is to win it outright. From South High School, I'm Haley Outen for the Sports Desk.
Thanks for that, Haley. So you heard it there. The Spartans with their sights set on another Pioneer League crown and a run past that CIF semifinal game. Of course, once they get into the playoffs, it's all up to them. But as far as that league crown goes, nobody would be surprised to see the squad at North give that title a run for its money. Under coach Mark Peock, the Saxons have risen to the top of the Pioneer League and given Torrance one heck of an inner city rivalry. But they're running their own race on the North High campus, and if things play out anything like last year, they could be set up to run away in the Pioneer League standings. A quick look up and down the North High roster might have had some Saxons fans lowering expectations in 2013, until they were reminded of who's leading the pack. Besides her play, it's really her leadership. You know, she's one of our team captains this year, along with Harley, who is also a returner. You know, she's a captain. Megan, I got a senior captain as well. So those three have done a really nice job of just kind of, you know, powering us through this early part of the season with their leadership, not only, you know, mental leadership, but also with their physical play. And, you know, obviously Sabre can be dominant at times. And with the team following the lead of junior Sabre and Roberts, one of the South Bay's premier volleyball players, retooling after a successful 2012 season was far from impossible. We, we knew it was going to be a process. We lost seven seniors last year, but obviously kept a good core uh, with our returning players as well. With, we've got two sophomores, two freshmen on the team that are getting some great experience right now. So by the time they hit league, they should be feeling pretty confident about you know, their skills and, and their roles on the team. In the words of Piak, North is simply powering through the early part of the season behind senior leadership. Leadership that experienced the highs of putting it to their biggest rival last year. Does it look like another North-South down the stretch, you think, in Pioneer League? I, I think so. You know, I mean, Coach Jones will always have his team ready to battle. They'll be well coached. Um, El Segundo, you know, same thing. You know, so they're, they're going to be in the mix. We've added Lawndale and Centennial, you know, so we don't know what's going to happen there. But, you know, we got to take care of business and all those before we focus on South. Yeah. But, yeah, they're definitely still uh, uh, our, our biggest rival in league and uh, will be the best team that, that we face for sure. The 2013 season at North High won't be all about Sabre and Roberts, nor will it only be about beating South High. But both will be consistent storylines throughout the fall as this team with the perfect blend of returning players and younger developing talent will hit the floor in pursuit of another Pioneer League crown. For now, until league play starts in October, the Saxons will continue to build, continue to grow, and win plenty of volleyball matches. I think we're, we're working on just being a little more patient and consistent. Uh, and we know that our, we want our best volleyball to be at the end, not at the beginning, which I think we kind of had that last year. Um, you know, we want to make a good run into league and then follow that up with CIF. They're very mentally tough and, and they're, they're really dedicated to making this a successful season in every way that they can. So uh, I'm really proud of them. Now, I'm not in the business of making predictions here, so we'll just have to join in watching these two teams settle the score on the court. Their league matchups, the ones that will really count this season, taking place in October. Last year, South and North split their matches with the visiting team, winning each time. All right, everybody, time for our first break of the day. When we get back, we'll hit the football field. Last week, somebody showed up to the party after a slow start to their season. Turns out they may have just been a sleeping giant all along, taking on one of the last two undefeated football squads in Torrance. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. We're here today to ask people about marriage. For starters, what's the best thing about being married? Who I get to stay married to. <laughs> Family. Togetherness. To me, is having a companion. This person. My favorite thing about being married is that I have a partner. Do you think your marriage is good for more than just the two of you? Uh, you mean, does it influence those around us? Yeah, I think. In a positive way? I think so. I would hope that people would see that uh, when we're together that we really have a very true affection for each other. What everybody wants and it, we, we know we're lucky to have it. The energy we give out in our home, I think, spreads out to other people. Your marriage just continues to go on and on and on. Oh, sure, and yep. affect generations after us. I think it really sort of stabilizes your whole community. It's a cornerstone of a society, right? Sounds like a good marriage goes a long way. It touches a lot of people. Want to improve your marriage? For ideas, go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. 
Hey there, Torrance. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Time to jump into some football action from around town this past weekend. I'll start with two Torrance schools coming together after completely different starts to the 2013 season. At Bishop Montgomery High, the Knights carried a 3-0 record into their matchup with the Saxons. But more impressive than the unblemished record were all the style points Ed Hodgkiss' boys earned along the way. Through the first eight quarters of football, they'd given up just six points. And behind running back Robbie Howe and QB Louis Soto, the Knights had scored 73 points of their own. At North High, we could just flip the script on their first two weeks of the season. Outscored 100-12 to against two Bay League teams to open it all up. In week three, the Saxons finally came alive, delivering a beating of their own against Losinger. A 61-point shutout. So, we begin week four. North schedule pitting them against back-to-back -back undefeated Torrance teams. First up, the red-hot Bishop Montgomery Knights and the entire South Bay eager to see if the Saxons would be on the giving or receiving end of another lopsided game. Bishop Montgomery and North Torrance went head-to-head -head Friday night in the Saxon Stadium. The Saxons came out on fire, scoring 28 points and leaving the Knights scoreless by halftime. Bishop went on a small run in the start of the second half and made it 28-6 with 7.32 left in the third quarter. Robbie Hu led the Knights with 104 yards on 23 carries. The Saxons quarterback, Mike Juarez, really displayed his versatility in tonight's game. The sophomore started at quarterback, played receiver, and defense all in one night. Mike threw for a touchdown, ran for two, and caught a touchdown pass for North. The Saxons came to play and defeated Bishop 56-6. to well, Our defense came out to play, they were ready, and from the opening gun it was just we were ready to play, and our offense took over as well, and as soon as the offense got on the field we started scoring points, the defense started getting live, and from then on it was just an uphill battle for Bishop. It is officially West Week for the Saxons. The big game will be Friday night against their rivals, West Torrance. West is always circled on our schedule because, like you said, they are cross town rivals. Our defense is playing lights out right now, and that's going to be the big key because West has a nice offense. You know, the big key is our defense playing really, really well, and our offense is getting a sync too. We're ready, and I'm excited to play our rivals, go into their house, show them that there's a change and there's a difference between last year's team and this year's team. Bishop will start league play at home on Friday against Mary Starr. Thanks for that, Reyna. So North High crosses off one undefeated foe on their September schedule, taking down Bishop Montgomery in high fashion. This week, they have a bye and then a matchup against West High after the bye to see if they can once again hand somebody their first loss of the season. Two more high-scoring teams coming right up. And after that huge win over Bishop, take a quick look at the Saxons' production through four weeks of football. I mentioned earlier they were outscored 100-12 to in weeks one and two. Weeks three and four, a complete 180 degree change. They're giving up 50 points a game when they lose, scoring 58 when they win. Defense is playing lights out and the offense is playing full speed. Whatever Todd Croce did to wake his boys up, clearly it worked. As for North's next opponent, the Saxons won't be expecting to blow anybody after their bye week. Torrance's last undefeated squad keeps their early season success going with a 49-point thrashing of El Segundo. The Eagles came to Torrance and couldn't put up much of a fight, but the big news of the evening really all about West's offense after the big win. Senior wide receiver Craig Naus breaks his fibula in the team's first dry offensive drive. Naus is the Warriors' all-time leader in catches and total yardage, so his leadership on the field will of course be missed. In fact, the incident gave an opportunity for the Warriors to show just how close they are when about 25 players and coaches from the team went straight from the game Friday night to Torrance's Memorial Hospital to check on their friend and teammate, only to learn that x-rays confirmed the 6'3 senior is going to have surgery on his leg and is expected to sit out for at least 12 weeks. The one refreshing part of the story came the next day, though, when Naus, broken leg at all, came to the team's film session and asked for a coach's shirt. All right, back over in the Pioneer League now. Today, we've seen one team flip their season around in the last week with another that's just looking as strong as ever. Now, the Torrance Tartars stand as the last squad in town still searching for their first win. Tamerlada checks in with the Tartars now in another preseason matchup, gearing up to put the pieces together before it all starts to count against the Pioneer League. Prior to kickoff, the Tartars received words of encouragement from their biggest support system. Electrifying running back David Arreo stepped his game up with senior running back Bobby Wilson out with an injury watching from the sidelines. The quarterback was successful getting his speedy wide receivers in the end zone, but fell short in a 22-25 loss against Peninsula. Despite losing the game, Coach Hollis honored his team for their hard work. 
Well, that's one thing we always talk about is violent effort. Uh, I, I teach effort because, you know, you don't have to have any athletic ability to give effort. And so uh, I think our guys, we're learning every game that we're giving more effort. Uh, you know, we're, we're, um, our offense ran better. Our uh, line blocked a whole lot better. Our defense played a lot better. But, you know, the thing that's getting us is the mistakes that we make, the uh, fumbles and the penalties and whatnot. Torrance defense made it very uncomfortable for Peninsula's offense the entire second half. We shut them down the last three quarters with six points, I think, or something like that. But our defense, we kept fighting all four quarters, and I loved it. We have tons of heart. Like, we never give up, no matter how much we beat ourselves down. Like, Peninsula didn't win this game. But, um, we beat ourselves. We, but we battled back through all that adversity, and we, we just kept fighting no matter what. I mean, it starts uh, on Monday in practice. We just need to all... Uh, all four days, we just need to practice hard, and then they'll all show on Friday night. Uh, just positive attitude. I'm going to tell everybody we need to work hard on Monday and just got to get the W Friday. After a hard-fought battle against Peninsula, the Tartars will stay optimistic and focus on winning their first game of the season. From Torrance, I'm Tamara Latta, reporting for the Sports Desk. Clearly, there is no transitive property of high school football here in the South Bay. The Tartars lose a close one to Peninsula. The same Peninsula squad that blew out North High 51 to nothing three weeks ago, a much better showing than the route they suffered against West in Week 2. Now, Torrance takes on 0-3 Losinger, so two squads both in search of their first win. The last time we talked about Losinger here on the Sports Desk, it was after the North Saxons got their first win of the season. All right, time for break number two this week. We'll jump up to the big boys. El Camino College looking to get in the zone. They finally had their breakout performance in the team's first home game. We'll see if they can build a little momentum and get back-to-back -back wins for the first time in exactly one year. Where do you think you're going? Is your body holding you back? I want to go running. Not with that knee, you're not. I'm fine. Negative. Your bones and joints can say no at any age. <laughs> with that shoulder, you're going to pick up that trash. Really? Keeping you from working, playing, or just plain moving. That's not a... Pick her up. What do you say? Yet a lot of people who live with pain fight back. Use your head. Save your back. My pride. My rules. And regain their lives. You gotta be kidding me. Whoa. I'm going running. I'm going running. I got to see this. Go on, pick it up. Fight for your mobility. Find your own inspiration at a nationinmotion.org. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Come on. I'll take it from here. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. The American dream need not forever be deferred. This is the richest and the most powerful country Hey, thanks for coming back for our third and final segment of the week that was in Torrance Prep Sports action. This time last year, the El Camino Warriors were in almost identical shoes. It was Murdoch Stadium's last season for the Torrance community to enjoy, and little was known about the direction Elko would take on the football field. They dropped their first two games before finally waking up and winning in blowout fashion against Pasadena City and Long Beach City College. The rest of the season was nothing like those two weeks, though. The Warriors ended with five more losses down the stretch, leading this year's squad dead set on turning things around for what will really be the last season at Murdoch Stadium. Jenny Phillips has the rest. The Warriors looking to improve to a winning record for the first time this season as they take on Pasadena City College for their last non-conference game. Warriors up 3-0 with five minutes left in the first, and Cole Webb hits one of his favorite targets, the 6'7 John Sifrin for a 31-yard touchdown pass. Elko up 10-0. Second quarter, same score, and Martin Booker fights his way into the end zone for a 5-yard TD rush. Warriors now up 17-0, and the Lancers don't have an answer. Still in the second, Webb finds Sifrin downfield again for their second scoring connection on the night, a 62-yard touchdown pass. 
Elko goes for the two-point conversion, but it's no good. They're up 23-0 now. Sifrin finishes the night with a team-high 114 yards in the air, and Webb passes for 309 and three TDs. The Warriors win this one 43-7. Now over 500 and riding a two-game win streak, this new Elko squad is confident about the rest of the season. Feels good. We had to make a point. El Camino came out bad last year, so we had to come out and win two this week. Feels great. I mean, it's just fantastic to put up 43 points and 50, 51 points consecutively. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, we're excited. We're playing all together as a team. That's very important uh, for offense. Uh, we're just playing together as a team, and it's working really well for us. Any win is a good win. Um, a blowout win is, is even better. Um, so, yeah, we've got some momentum rolling, and we're, we're looking forward to taking that to Long Beach next week. We still have a lot of work to do. Uh, two wins, is, it doesn't really mean a lot, so we just got to come back here next week and work. We got to stay hungry. That's it. We got to stay hungry. Another huge win for the Warriors tonight is they really come together on both sides of the ball. The offense putting up 43 points and the defense coming very close to a shutout there. Next week, though, the Warriors are back on the road. They travel to their rival Long Beach City College for a big showdown. From El Camino College, I'm Jenny Phillips for the Sports Desk. Two and one, the El Camino Warriors looking at their schedule and holding a winning record for the first time since they wrapped up their 2011 campaign with an eight and three record. Cole Webb wraps it up with 309 yards in the air on 21 of 30 passing. Sifrin his go-to guy on the night with 114 yards and two big TDs. The Warriors offense runs 78 plays total. They gained 585 yards. So per snap, Elko was able to cover seven and a half yards of turf against Pasadena City College. Next up, the Warriors hit the road to take on Long Beach City College this weekend. In the meantime, as always, we love to hear from you here at City Cable 3, and if you love hearing from us, well, it's pretty easy. Check us out online with our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash the Sports Desk TV. Same old number and email address as well, anytime you want to reach out with a story idea or you just feel like saying hey. Okay, everybody, that wraps up another week in South Bay Prep Sports. We will see you next time. Have a good one.